Come on, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He is here, church. Come on, he is here. You know, it's all about his presence. If he is not here, then we are wasting time. But there is nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. I want to share with you today on keeping the fire burning. I don't know how far we can get. In the book of Leviticus chapter 6, Leviticus chapter 6, God makes it very clear. In chapter 6 was written when God had established the worship of his, of his glory in the tabernacle. And when he established it, he poured out fire from heaven. And the fire was poured out because they had to burn sacrifices. They had to light the lampstand and burn incense in his presence every day, all day, for a week, for a month, for a year, for years. And he said that fire should never go out. They could not light another fire. Nadab and Abihu lit another fire and they were killed. So God made a law that that fire was supposed to be kept. And that was the only fire they should use in the entire worship of him in the tabernacle and in the temple. And in the New Testament, when the church was born, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says the fire of God came into the, the upper room and sat on each of their heads. So the church was born in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at churches today and they're dead and cold, it's because they don't have the fire. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in a place without fire. I want the fire of God to be in our midst. Come on, say amen, somebody. I don't want to come to church and know how the service will begin and how it's going to end. I want God to show up and do whatever he want to do. Come on, somebody. Is that what you want? And the fire of God. Come on, tell somebody the fire of God. So what he's saying here, on the day of Pentecost when the fire was poured out, everything that we do must be done by the Spirit of God. In the last days he said, I'm seeking for the people who will worship me in spirit. Come on, say it if it's me, if you know it. In spirit and in truth. Not just truth. There are a lot of churches with liturgy and truth, but they don't have no spirit. And then there are a lot of churches with spirit and no truth. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the right place at the right time where there is spirit and there is truth. So God said you must keep this fire burning and the fire, say it with me, and the fire must never go out. Can you imagine that? So the fire was a divine fire. This fire came from heaven. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says when they were all together in one place, in one accord, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. How many of you know that God is ready to do greater things than that today? Come on, how many of you know that's why you are here? You are here because you are some of the people that God is going to use to demonstrate his glory in the earth. It's not only going to be preachers. It's going to be ordinary people doing extraordinary things that he will be glorified. That he would be glorified. But in the word, he taught us how. So the fire was a divine fire. And the fire 
was given for a divine purpose. Nothing must be lit in the temple or in the tabernacle without using this fire. So in our churches, if we're going to see breakthrough and revival, our prayer got to be with fire. Our worship got to be with fire like we had today. Come on, how many of you know there was fire in this place? Let me tell you something. No devil can, cannot recognize fire. The worst mad person out of their mind will never run into a burning building. They're not that mad. They know that fire is dangerous. The greatest lion is intimidated by fire. I've been to Africa. I know what I'm talking about. I came to tell you if there is devils in your home, what you need is the fire of God in your house and watch how the devils will run. But he taught us in the word it was a divine fire. The fire was given for a divine purpose. But what I want to talk about today is that the fire was kept by human responsibility. How can we keep the fire burning for a day, for a week, for a month, for a year, and for years? The Bible makes it very clear how we should do that. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 11 it says, And the priest shall put off his garment and put on other garments. He shall carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And he shall what? And the fire upon the altar shall ever be burning in it. And he shall put place wood upon the altar every morning and every evening. And the Bible says, and then he must take the sacrifice and lay it upon the altar and the fire upon the altar shall never go out. So are you ready? Are you ready, church? The first thing if you're going to keep the fire burning is that the priests must take off their garments and they had to put on other garments. It was a daily thing. In the book of Zechariah chapter 3, the Bible says that Joshua was standing in the presence of the Lord and Satan was standing at his right hand to resist him. How was he able to do that? The Bible made it very clear. He was able to do it because Joshua's garment was dirty. And the Bible says he had dirty garments on. What is the garment? The garment speaks of our personality, of who we are. It speaks of the spirit of a man. And the Bible talk about the fruit of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit. If you're going to keep the fire burning, you got to be willing to take off from you the old you. You got to be willing to change your attitude. You got to be willing to change who you were. You can't live the way you used to live before. You got to make up your mind. If I'm going to do the will of God, I've got to be holy. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? He that had what clean hands and a pure heart. That's why David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. You see, if you're going to keep the fire burning, you got to change. And God made a description of the garment. He said the first thing they got to do is wear linen breeches. That means that their underwear, the closest part of, to their personality, their sexuality, got to be holy. There are people who want to keep the fire burning, but they have a different life in church and another one on the outside. You can't walk that way. You got to be willing to take off the old man. There's certain things you got to say to yourself. That's who I was. That's not who I am. And I am what I am by the grace of God. And the devil is going to try you. People are going to try you. 
Things are going to come up inside you you didn't even know exist. Here are things inside you and what God is doing is working on you and working on me. Had we come to that place, you got to take off the old man. That's why the Bible said the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and temperance and love. And against such there is no law. I know lots of people, they want the fire, but they want to do it. They want to minister to the fire in just in who they are. They are not willing to change. They are not willing to change. How many of you know you can't do the will of God if you are not willing to change? You're going to be changed all the time. Come on. There's certain things you did last year that God is saying that's no more. That was when you were a baby. Now you grow up. That's why Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I I put away, can you say that with me? I put away childish things. Not God, I put it away. Come on, not God, I put it away. There's certain things you got to put away. How many of you know that? How many of you know that when you're going with God, there are even some people you got to put away. Even some of your friends you got to put away. You can't laugh no more at their jokes that they tell. You are not no longer comfortable in their presence. You don't want to be looking at certain things. You got to watch over your speech. You got to watch over your attitude. You got to watch who you are because I want to minister to God. The second thing that they must do is that is you got to gather up the ashes and carry it outside the camp. Now what is the ashes? The ashes represents the waste product or the product of fire. Wherever there is fire, there is going to be ashes. And ashes represent sin. It is when you begin to serve God, the closer you get to God, the more you will realize the imperfections that are in your life. Some people say, do I have to repent every day? Yes. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we would have fellowship one with the other and the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. The Bible says if a man say he have no sin, he deceives himself and the truth is not in him. Do you know that in the Old Testament, when the high priest is going to enter the Holy of Holies, he had to fast for a week. He had to cleanse himself. He had to kill a lamb and he had to put the blood on his thumb, his right thumb, and the blood on his big toe, and the blood in his right ear, and still they would tie a rope on his feet when he entered in the Holy of Holies, because if there is sin, he will die there, and nobody can go in and take him out. That's what the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We take it so casual today and no realize you cannot enter the, in the presence of God without blood. That's what the Bible says, having boldness to enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Come on, would you praise God for the blood of Jesus? Come on, hallelujah. Do you know that the Jewish people would never pronounce a name of God? yud hey vav hey. They were afraid to pronounce that name. But we can call the name. You know why? Because of the blood of Jesus. I can enter his presence by the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says having boldness to enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, which is to say his flesh. 
So every day you got to gather up those ashes. Every day, you see, because the closer you get to God, is more you will realize that there are things got to be dealt with. Can you imagine Isaiah chapter 6? He says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. But when you see God, you will see yourself. And he said, woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. I came to tell you today, the closer you get to God, God is going to begin to show you. Because the word of God is like a mirror. The more you look into it, you will see where you are. If your garment is dirty and you were living in darkness, you wouldn't see it. But the moment you come in the light, you will realize what's going on. I came to tell you, and the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God, hallelujah, God is able to turn it around in your life. He says you must carry out the ashes. And the third thing, and I got to go quickly, the third thing is that they must lay wood on the altar. The wood represents prayer. Your prayer and your worship. Some people wait for Sunday morning to come to church and worship. But you can't be somebody like that. You got to worship God right where you are at home. At times you got to put the worship on in your car and sing down the street and just bless the name of the Lord. Come on somebody. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. But prayer, you got to have a place in your house that is not for watching TV or anything else. A place where you seek God for yourself. This fire can burn on its, on its own. It's got to have wood. It's got to have a prayer life. A time where you seek God for yourself and enter. He said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And I will give, bless his name. I came to say to you, this is not a church thing. You don't wait to come to church to get Philip. You get Philip and come to the house so that your cup would be full and running over on somebody else. Come on, hallelujah. Some people say, but why you got to pray, so, sing so loud? Because they don't know what we are talking about. How many of you know that when God touched you and fill you, you can't be quiet. You got to bless the name of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. You got to give him all the glory. So hear what he said you got to do. You got to do all these things. You must first, you got to, you got to put, change your garment. Then you got to carry the ashes out. And then the third thing that you must do is that you got to lay wood in order on the altar. It's not church. This is not just when you come to church. You see, God can be moving in church greatly. And if you just come and fold your hands and look on, he wouldn't receive anything. You got to jump into the water. That's why God, Jesus told Peter, he said, you fish all day, but you didn't catch nothing. Launch out in the deep. You got to go where you've never been before. Come on, somebody. You got to do what you never did before. If all you do, is what you have done you will just receive what you have but if you are willing to go in the deep just worship him bless the name of the Lord David said bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all my iniquities who heals all my diseases who satisfy my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like an eagle come on somebody you gotta learn to do this this is not waiting for somebody you know that you can worship God without music you know that you don't worship God right where you are right in your house and I believe those times the devil get more nervous when he expect you to cry and you worship 
when he expect you to be defeated and you bless the name of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. When he expect you to be mourning and calling people, telling them how bad it is, and instead of doing that, you raise your hands and say, I will bless the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. I will glorify the name of Jesus. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know he's going to make a way for me where there seemed to be no way. The devil come and the doctor give you bad news. And instead of crying, you can go and seek him and he can give you a word. Like when they told me, in the front of your heart is dead. I, I believe the devil was looking at my face to see what is going to be. But I seek the name of the Lord. And God said in his word, he said it very, very clear. He made it very, very clear. He says, if my, my heart fail, he says, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forevermore. Come on, you are sick and the devil say you're going to die. Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report from the doctor? Are you going to lift up your eyes and say, my God, hallelujah. He says, I am the Lord that he led thee. You get a little older and the devil say you are old now you can say like David I was young and now I'm old I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread it's a choice you got to make if you're going to put some wood on the altar you got to make a choice and the last thing God said after you have done all of that and the fire is raging on your altar then you got to take the sacrifice and lay it on the altar what is the sacrifice Romans chapter 12 it says we then as workers together with Christ beseech you therefore brethren that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Now people can pray for you but nobody can present your sacrifice for you. You got to do it for yourself. Come and tell somebody, you got to do it for yourself. That's why he said, we then as workers together with Christ, beseech you therefore that ye present your body. Come and tell somebody, I got to give my body. My body is my servant. I am more than my body. I am spirit and I have a soul and I am living in this body. This body is not my master. This body is my servant. I went on a fast one time for 40 days drinking water alone. Lose 68 pounds. And the body says, look, you are trying to kill me. I said, I'm not trying to kill you, but you're going to learn that I am the boss of you. You got to tell your mind what to, you got to tell your mind what to think. You know, you got to tell your own mouth what to speak. You got to tell your eyes what to see. This body is not your boss. This body is the house you're going to live in. And soon you're going to discard this old house and you're going to put on a house that is glorious. Come on, hallelujah. This body is the one that you got to take and you got to present. Hear what Paul says. He says, I present my body. He said, I subject my body lest after I have preached the gospel, I myself be a castaway. I bring my body under subjection. And the Bible says I must learn to possess my own vessel. 
And I look at people preaching the gospel and, and people living and they behave like if their body is their boss. So they're involved in all kinds of things that is not right. But the time has come in the house of God where holiness must prevail in the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. We got to make up our mind that this body, I'm going to bring it on the subjection. Have you ever been... And all of a sudden, your mind wants to run in a direction that's not right. Huh? Somebody cut you off in traffic and worse, come out your mouth, you didn't even know you still have. Come on, somebody. Don't look at me like that. You, you, you be, your things begin to happen and certain circumstances and, and you notice you're trying to respond a certain way. You got to grab this body and say, no. You are not going that way. Come on. Hallelujah. You are not going that way. I bring my body shape. I bring my body under subjection. Lest after I have preached the gospel, I myself be a castaway. But when you put your body on the altar and the fire begin to burn... You're going to see things rise up you didn't even know. You got some pride in you. You know, people got pride of race and pride of grace and pride of pace. And, and people are proud of, 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 of their color and proud of where they've been. And there's so many things. But the moment you put yourself on the altar and those things, the only reason it rises up is so that it can be dealt with. Come on, I said the moment it rise up is that it can be dealt with. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I heard a sister testify and she said, I didn't even know I had pride. But lately God has been dealing with it. Hey, somebody, she is getting somewhere. Because the moment you be put your life on the altar, God is going to begin to deal with you. Some of you had visions of what you're going to do. You don't know. The vision that you saw, the you that saw the vision and the you that fulfill it is two different people. You got to grow into that you who will fulfill the vision God showed you. I got to say that again. You got to grow into the you to fulfill the vision that God has shown you. You ain't there yet. The Joseph that saw the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowing to him was not the Joseph when his brothers came and they thought he would take revenge on them. And he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I have grown past that. You know what I'm talking about, brother. I've grown past that. I can take this life and I lay it on the altar. But when the fire began to burn it, Pastor Adam, would you come up? When the fire began to burn the sacrifice, at times it would want to roll off the altar and, and get up and run away. Because the fire is too hot. God's dealing is too difficult. Why are you going to go through this? Why can't I just be like everybody else? Why? That's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron. But do you know what I mean? Iron no sharpen iron just by lying next to each other, but by rubbing. So when God began to work on you, the temptation is, it's too hot. It's too difficult. I can't do this no more. I, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to go through this. But God is saying, you stay right where you are. You are not coming off this altar until I finish with you. Can you imagine Moses? Moses waited 40 years before God was ready to release him. Some of you complain. It's too hot, too difficult. My wait is too long. But you know what they did? When they kept the sacrifice on the altar, and the sacrifice looked as though it's one or all off, and they had two hooks just like this that they would pin it on the altar. And that's what God wants you to do to pin you on His altar. You know what the hooks are? It is discipline and Determination. 
And that's two words we don't like today. Discipline. Why do I have to discipline myself? Why do I have to tell myself? Why can't I just be like everybody else? But you see, others may, but you may not. Others can, but you cannot. You are called to a higher standard. And that's why God is working on you like that. He wants you to discipline yourself. No, you are not going that way. And determination, everybody else run away. Man, I can't run. I got to stay the course. Because God has something wonderful for me. Can you get a mic? Can you get a mic? Let the worshipers come. God has something wonderful for me. I ask you today, can we keep the fire burning in the church? Can we see the move of God in journey? Can we flow with God? Are there people here who will change their garment? Are there people here who will bring their lives on the subjection that the only thing that is important is to glorify the name of Jesus?